Okay, let's go over the concept of sessions. Sessions are a way to authenticate a user without them having to type in their username and password each and every time they want to do something that requires authenticity. So let's start with an analogy. So we have this guy named James. James is a secret agent. There is a secret agency and James needs to go into the secret agency, get past the receptionist every time he wants to get his secret missions, which are some secret documents. So this is what he wants, his mission brief. So whenever James wants to go in the secret agency, he needs to authenticate himself, which means he needs to prove that he is who he really is. So in order to do that, he has to bring two things. He has to bring his birth certificate, and then he has to recite 50 word long passphrase. So every time he walks in here, he has to bring this and then recite this. Every single time. The security here is very tight. So one day he gets fed up with doing this, and he goes and he talks to the manager and to the receptionist, and they form a deal. The deal is, when he goes into the secret agency once, he brings this stuff, but afterwards, they give him a red key card. And this key card basically says James is who he says he is, because James is the only one who has this key card. Now, every time James wants to go back into the secret agency, all he has to do is bring this key card, and because he's the only one that has this, the secret agency knows that it's him. Now the reason this works is because in order to get the key card, he had to have had this stuff in the first place. Because of that prerequisite, the secret agency knows that the key card is valid. This is how sessions usually work in programming. To match it up with the real world, instead of a birth certificate and a giant passphrase, you usually have a username and a password. Now when you're visiting a website, like Facebook for example, you need to type in your username and password to get into the website. In other words, so that you prove you are the owner of the account. It would be really annoying if you had to type in your username and password for every single little thing you do on Facebook. If you want to make a post, type in your username and password. If you want to make a comment, type in your username and password. That would be necessary because Facebook wants to make sure you're the account owner before you do something that requires you to be the account owner, like make comments or make posts. So instead of making you type in your username and password every single time, what websites do is that they give you a session ID. And this session ID is basically this key card. If you have this session ID, then the website knows it's really you. Because in order to get this session ID, you had to type in your username and password. So you're the only one who could have that session ID. In the back end, what the application has is a bunch of sessions. We'll pretend the application is storing them in a hash. Let's say the user enters in their username and password. Your application would check to make sure that's correct. And if it is, it creates a session. In this case, 57 is your session ID. And this inner hash is the session itself. So we're gonna hand back the session ID. And now every time the user wants to do something critical, he will hand us this session ID. And then we can look up to see which user belongs to that session ID. What would be the problem if we took the user ID instead of a session ID? Exactly. If we took the user ID instead, then any user could say they're any user. I could say, hey, Facebook, post this comment as user number 305. And then I have no idea who that user is, but Facebook would be like, okay, here it is. That's not good because that user didn't actually make that comment. That's a good question. So the question was, what is the difference between a user ID and a session ID? In practice, session IDs are more secure because they're actually going to be a very long string of letters and numbers. The session ID could be 32 characters, 48 characters, some very long number. And because of that, it's nearly impossible to guess a session ID for another user. So yeah, we don't want to accept user IDs because then anyone could impersonate anyone else. So we accept session IDs, and those session IDs must exist in our session database. And if they don't exist, then the user is not logged in.